uh, during lockdown, I think, uh, maybe move the ball down the field a little bit. Uh, I think we were all uh, kind of surprised by uh, the response to the public service announcement. Um, you know, we were just kind of sending it out there, but then we realized that it was, um, you know, catching fire and people wanted to kind of revisit these characters and uh, the pandemic felt like a compelling reason to, to uh, you know, catch up with where he would be at the time and then. And then I got a call out of the blue from Michael Slutra at Universal saying, we're thinking about maybe making a monk movie for Peacock. And it's something we've been wanting to do for a decade. <laughs> and in fact, in the early days, tried to get them to do it and relaunch it at that time. And stars, I guess, just aligned. And uh, for all of you, uh, but especially you, Tony, was there any hesitation or fears in returning to this character in a more substantial way than the PSA? Oh, sure. <laughs> Of course, um, you know, it, we wrapped the show in 09, and uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of time passed, and uh, a lot of other projects we've all been involved with. Not me. And <laughs> <laughs> Most of us have been involved with. And, and uh, you know, I really, um, I wasn't really 100% convinced that it was the, you know, it was the, the moment, but then Andy came in with such a great pitch, such a great treatment, and uh, we all felt that, you know, we all felt that it was the right time and the right idea, and um, you know, we just, we just jumped in. We all had to jump in. And did one of you or? Uh, the production have the brown suits in storage, or did you have to make them from scratch? No, we had to make them again. Yeah, we started over. From scratch. It's 14 years. I don't know. Maybe Andy had it in his closet all that time. You could pick it up on eBay, probably. If I had it. Andy's probably a hoarder, though. <laughs> what? were you all most excited about to explore with these characters with over a decade of their lives having been lived in, in this intervening time between the show ending and this film? I think getting the team back together is probably the most exciting for me. I mean, we had such great chemistry when we did it for the eight years before. So there's always that, that fear, like you mentioned, that now we're back, how's it gonna go? We opened up with a scene at the airport, the first scene that we shot, which had pretty much everyone in it. and. Um, I think we all turned to each other at that scene and said, I will say that back. we only wanted to do it when it came to us if we could tell a story worth telling. And I mean, that was Tony's thing and, and mine and Randy's too. And I gotta give Andy credit, we all do for, I mean, it's pretty amazing to have a movie about a man who wants to commit suicide, a comedy. And, 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 and have the ending that we had. So it was able to ride that line that we did in series in a movie, um, you know, where you're telling some, you know, talking about mental illness and at the same time being able to laugh with the character. So I, it, we all thought it was a really special story to tell. It, it's, it is a tricky, it's a tricky tone. It's a, it's a very fragile tone that Monk is, Monk lives in its own universe. There's no other show. You know, the DC universe has a hundred characters. The Marvel universe has a hundred characters. Monk is just us, you know. There's no other show in this world. And it's a very tricky tone. And there's no other director that I think we would trust with that. It's, it's, uh, it's a very short list of directors. In fact, it's only one name, and that's Randy Zisk, who, yeah. who, uh, who steered the steered the ship for eight seasons. Uh, and I also want to mention that for me, it was very, I was, uh, it was very difficult, very scary for me to write a monk script alone again. I, <clears throat> there, I have some. Uh, members of the old writing staff here in the room, and I miss them very much uh, when I was doing this thing. Uh, but, uh, but as far as the, the, uh, the uh, original premise, the original idea, I hope you don't mind me talking about how you pitched this to us. 
Um, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Tony. Really started with Andy. Andy, we got all <clears throat> on a conference call, and Andy uh, launched into this pitch, and he said, "We're you know uh, he invoked it's a wonderful life, you know, which is a classic, you know, American classic, heartwarming story, Christmas story, which has also elements of comedy laced through it. And yet it starts with a man about to off himself. And, and, uh, and, and I, we were all so taken by that notion that, that yeah, it, it was done so brilliantly then, and we could, we could sort of um, draw steel from that and um, grand grand theft yeah and, you know the the uh, the premise was yeah Frank Capra is a wonderful life and and the ending even the line even the Lord I'm sorry Trudy's line uh, uh, they heard you were in trouble they wanted to help I believe is a yeah. is a direct is a, is a copy and paste from uh, from the last scene of Wonderful Life well just stealing from the best there so I, I was going to ask. You know, the show, as you said, has always been about murder and grief and mental illness, but this is a bit heavier than the nine seasons, uh, collectively. There were- I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it. I, I'm full disclosure here. I resisted that scene. Uh, on the page, I, I just, I did not, <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't have the confidence that, what's the, I just thought. What's the point? Say it, say I, the word. No, no, the point? The point, no. <laughs> I'm going to say the word. I thought, even for Monk, even for our show, this is cheap. <laughs> <laughs> this is just cheap. It's scatological and it's, and I have to tell you, once we did it and we started seeing the dailies and editing it, it became like my favorite sequence. <laughs> yeah. I thank you. Oh, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll uh, it might be too early to thank you. But, <laughs> but, uh, and I'm going to now put in all my future jobs, I'm going to have it in my contract that there has to be dog poop in there. Yeah. Um, uh, no, that, that also made me. I, I kind of did. Uh, I did compromise. I, you know, I, I was giving notes. These guys up here had notes, and the studio had notes, and I listened. I I, I pretended to listen, and uh, and and gave in. And you know, it's all it's all uh, horse trading. You give in on some, but the <laughs> but stepping on uh, a pile of dog shit while a man was just was blown up forty yards away, <laughs> and then screaming on over here, somebody that that seemed for some reason, very important to me. <laughs> I'm proud of it. And Randy, tell me more about directing that. Are you like, rise in pain more? Like, how does that go? <laughs> well, I think Dave and I talked about that scene in prep quite a bit. <laughs> as far as filming it, I mean, it was really, up to, I mean, when Tony's on the ground screaming and everyone's running by him, but my favorite line is the one after that when Tony says, Natalie's with the other victims. <laughs> She's with the other victims. Yeah. So we started with that, just kind of like led through. But again, I think it was another example. He's being modest. It's another example. It's beautifully directed. I think the more people running past Monk, the funnier that scene is. And, and uh, Randy just kept pouring, you know, extras in behind him. And you couldn't tell, but it was the same extras running in a circle. And we didn't have the, we didn't quite have the budget. <laughs> Well, and then you also do something very scandalous, which is you show us Monk's feet. Um, or, or that's, the that's Monk's version of nudity. Well, no, I was going to say, show version of nudity. Was there any debate about whether this was too far for Adrian Monk? Was it the first time we saw Monk's feet? I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was. Well, I was in a pool in, in uh, Mr. Monk Takes His Medicine. You walked into the I was, sea at the end of summer. No, but I was fully dressed. Oh, you were fully dressed. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I was a naked man. <laughs> Gamble Proscript. Um, yeah, so we saw the feet. Yeah, that's right. I actually, in, on this, in one... Uh, they are my best feature, by the way. <laughs> 
Uh, well, that's why I knew we hadn't seen them before, because I would have remembered. One draft of the script, the shoes, it began, the scene began with the shoes uh, being set on fire. <laughs> but I don't, uh, we didn't go there. And uh, we kind of set this farewell tour, like, are we going to keep getting more, could it be like Kenneth Branagh and Hercule Poirot, where like every couple years we get another one? Yes! yes. yes. It's up to Universal one day, not, not up to us. I mean, Sinatra did a, a number of, uh, of farewell tours, so it's not unprecedented. We hope so. Yeah, we hope so. I, I do have an idea for uh, for another, but again, it's... That was the reason for bringing the dog into the end. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so we'd have a more story to tell. That was, yeah. We work from the dog backwards. Amazing. Wow. Thank you all.